Sorry, Mr. Giardi, I'm a robot. <laughs> I never would have guessed. We are very, very pleased to reintroduce our lovely friend who has been with us many times. It is the one and only Mr. Matt Nabeski. Yo, yo. Hello again. Welcome Hello, back. Hello, thanks for having me. We're Hello. always so honored to have you, and especially the creator of our theme song, which you and Alski have so generously let us use since we uh, rebranded, and we rock out to it every single time. Oh, that's Literally. awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's, I mean, I say it every time, but it's the ultimate compliment. It's the ultimate honor for sure. So thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we are welcoming to the stream for his very first time. We are so excited to welcome the fantabulous Jacob Young. Whoa. Thank Hello. you so much. Allison Cheese. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for writing that song, bro. You know, I didn't know it was on the album before. Yeah. Uh, kid, Danica, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, guys. Thank We're you. so excited. And um, so I guess it was about a month ago, uh, Matt or Allison Trains, as I guess we can call him, called me up and he's like, I have this idea for a show. You have to meet my friend Jacob. And I was like, Are you kidding me? This is huge. <laughs> We've yeah. been like counting down the minutes to this, but I, I kind of wanted to start off because um, how do the two of you guys actually know each other? It's it's a mutual friend, actually. Bar Barbara Rich. Barbara Rich. <laughs> I met Barbara yeah. Rich in Redondo Beach when I was down in Redondo, and I was like, there was like a little tiny barbershop around the corner, and I'm, I'm not a complicated guy. I'm like, I just got to go get my hair cut. Mm -hmm. And this guy was there and um, he was actually just starting cutting hair at the time. And he was he was he was like really freaking slow. Right. <laughs> and I was like, is this guy ever going to get through my haircut? Mm -hmm. um, but I instantly like I fell in love with the guy. I was like he was just he was like he was just a cool dude. Um, and then eventually he just got better and better and he started making rounds and everybody started like getting to know him. And that's how this came together with, yeah. uh, with Matt. Barbara Rich. Awesome. Yeah, he, he, Rich is a, he he started, he cut Justin's hair when Justin was actually on Redondo Beach as well. He was staying out there with his family. They became really good friends. And then Rich became like almost just like part of our family within the band. And so he's all, like, anytime we're in the area, he's out hanging with us at shows and, um, and he comes and cuts everybody's hair. In fact, he's in some of our videos cutting everybody's hair, nice. <laughs> which is crazy. And what's really funny is everybody gave me shit about this because I was the only person who wouldn't let him cut my hair in the band for the longest time because I'm, a, I'm kind of particular about things. And I finally let him do it. And I, that's the I've ever had in my life. That guy's cool. amazing. Should have done it a long time ago. But he's <laughs> well, like he's like family to us for sure. He's truly family. He's become family to me. And it's, you know, he, he has, he does show up. Like I'll be in Los Angeles. I'm like, I'm doing an appearance. Um, and I'm, I'm staying up at the, you know, uh, like maybe the London hotel or something. And, and I'm like, it's 11 o'clock at night. I need a cut. I just flew into town and he shows up every single time. Wow. Uh, he's amazing. Cool. So, yeah. Damn. That's a good guy to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I feel like I know him now. Okay, so so Jacob, so uh, have you had the chance to visit Orb Studios yet? Or is this something that we're hoping for in the future? Um, Orb Studios? No, I haven't. Yeah, okay. that's, that's that's my joint. That's where he's coming. Yeah. yeah, no, I haven't some... been down to Austin Way. Well, I have to say, like having been to Orb, it is such a beautiful studio. And everyone there is so professional and so welcoming. So hopefully the two of y'all... You know, I mean, is is there plans for there? For there is definitely plans in the future. We have been we've been talking about this for a while, and I've seen photos of of the place, and it's absolutely stunning. Um, and if somebody just asked me on the set of a particular show that I'm working on at the moment. They were asking about Austin. I, said, I know some folks down that way, and they're mm -hmm. like, "Well, what, you know, what do people do for work down there?" And this is like, this is a is an actor, and I was like, "Well, you know, it's you know, it's, it's like." nashville but it's not nashville and there's artists mm -hmm. and there's people doing all sorts of really cool stuff and um and he's like oh really and i said yeah 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 I'll, i'm actually you know jumping on on a podcast talking about a little bit about it sweet nice. yeah, that's, yeah that's amazing well kind of to jump off that uh, obviously like we already mentioned our wonderful theme song but we also have to mention that icarus bell 
has a new single that's dropping in just a couple weeks on May 28th, Bottle oh. Rocket. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate that little plug. That's awesome. Oh, no. It's of it's course. been a it's been yeah. a long time coming. I mean, you know, making music, you'd think that when you have a recording studio at your disposal, making music would be really fast and easy when it's your own music, but it's <laughs> it's like going down the rabbit hole, you know. It's just like uh there's so many moving parts because it's just Alski and I so when we have other people doing things, in fact, I could talk about a couple of them, but when we have other people contributing and doing things, it becomes such a, like, it's larger than us and we, and there's other schedules and there's other people involved. And so like on this one, we have some guests, uh, Justin actually sings with me in the chorus on this one, oh. which oh, is the first awesome. song he's performed on. Yeah. So, so we'll definitely talk about that when we put the song out for sure. Awesome. Can't wait to hear it. You guys have like every yeah. single release so far has been aces. I mean, it's been so good. Uh, uh, I see what you did there. Thank <laughs> you so much. Yeah, I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, kind of to, to jump off there. So Jacob, uh, being that you're mostly involved with, with country music, how, how did you get more involved in that? And what draws you to country more than say other genres? Well, you know, I mean, I listen to everything. I really do. But country music has always been in in my soul. And it's funny, whenever I write or, or you know, make an attempt to write anything, I, I in the early days, it always just came out as a country song. And I was like, well, shit, stop fighting it. Just do it. Just start writing country music. So that's that's how that came about. And, and um, you know, I've, I've had such a great time, you know, going back and forth to Nashville and, and writing with some other cats and, uh, I just, you know, it was, it was something that I really needed that, that, you know, this point and, you know, in my past for such a long time. And I was glad that, um, you know, I'm glad to be doing it and I continue to do it all the time. Yeah. What, and do you have any new music on the horizon? Well, that is a good question. I have a song book, but I'm going to have to go down to Orb Studios and record them. There we go. Yes. <laughs> we, we've been talking about it for quite a while now. I mean, you know, every, like everybody says, right? I feel like you can't get through a, a conversation without somebody going, well, then the pandemic hit, right? So we were talking about it. We definitely were like, yeah, let's do this. Let's get, you know, let's work on some songs. Let's figure out a weekend. And then the pandemic hit, you know? So now we're coming out the other side here. So we'll make something happen. Yeah, for I'm sure. looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, so are we. Yay. Danica. Cool. All right. Switching gears again. So, of course, Jacob, we have to have to have to mention the fact that you are going to be playing a very particular character on the upcoming season of Walking Dead. Now, obviously, we know you can't really talk about a whole lot of stuff. They're they're very particular about what everybody says about the show and, and the process. But um, what can you tell us overall about uh, preparing for zombies? Well, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that is a loaded question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, well, the reason why I look like a bit like a Neanderthal right now is because of, of that exact reason. Um, uh, I showed up, uh, I think, for originally for the makeup test. And they're like, hey, can you just stop shaving? I was like, oh, God, really? <laughs> 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 gotta, like clean myself up a little bit. I was like trying to clean myself up for tonight. I was like, oh god, I look ridiculous. So I put some stuff <laughs> grease in my beard tonight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. So yeah, very, very excited. What, a, what a great franchise, right? What an amazing, and they just keep growing. You know, with all the spinoffs, and you know, there's another spinoff uh, with Daryl and Carol coming, and also a new uh, feature film, of course, and hopefully, you know, something. <laughs> be a prequel to what I'm doing at the moment. Um, but I can't talk too much about that, but uh, but very, very excited. You know, it's such an amazing crew and, and you know, this is such a massive production. Uh, I've worked on big productions before, but to have everything functioning so smoothly, well, I'm, I'm talking massive cranes. We have unpredictable weather here in Atlanta, of course. There's, it could be raining. So there's, you know, they have to be able to adjust. And there's like all this the equipment. They get these multi-thousand dollar Panavision cameras. They're shooting all this stuff on there, attaching to these massive jibs that are flying over the backs of buildings. Um, and, of course, 70, uh, you know, walkers, you know, out there at any time. It's just, it's, 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 it's intense. It's really intense. And, and I'm so stoked to be working, you know, on this show. It's, uh, it's, it's really, and, and I gotta say, um, you know, I had watched, I know Matt, you, you are a huge fan. And yes. 
I had I had only watched a couple episodes and I was digging it. And you know, I, I you know, then it, it just happened and thing life happens and I kind of got away from it. My son has watched every single season up to date. And um when he found out I was working on it, I think he was probably more stoked than you. Just saying. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I was well, thrilled when I saw. I got. In fact, it was Deadline that I saw too, and I saw that. Like, I get notifications, and I woke up and I saw that, and I was like, "You've got to be kidding me! No way! That yeah. is. Oh man, I hate to be that guy, but it's like, can I please just come? I just want to come visit. I just want to come look. Can I see what's going on, please? Can you I want to actually. I want to drag everybody down there to see this, but you know, with this, you know, I mean, I don't know yeah. how it was down, you know, before COVID, but with COVID and the testing, I mean, we're, we're, we are not only tested three days a week, but we're also um, <laughs> rapid tested every time we're on set. So it's just, yeah. it's just COVID rapid, rapid. I mean, I've, I think I've done seven COVID tests in the last week and I'm already vaccinated because I'm like, well, oh, hopefully, wow. yeah. like, hopefully you can get, a, get around this. So I don't want to have to be sticking those things up my nose anymore uh, yeah. and, and just showing up for no good reason. The only reason they, you know, I show up anymore is because they pay you to do it, which is. <laughs> sounds fun. There you yeah. go. Yeah. They, they actually oh, film, yeah. they actually I mean, film um, fear uh, like in my neighborhood. Yeah. Like, so it's, yeah, it's right down, down, down the road from me. Yeah. So, so you why aren't you working out. on yeah. that? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to see if I can be in it. I want to be a zombie, man. I'm going to see if I can be an extra. We'll see well, if it happens. You know, fr from what I was talking to a couple of people, maybe uh, it might have been Norman. I don't know. Just saying. But uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, they, they, they prefer some walkers over other walkers. So you really got to get your walk and your your snarl down. Oh, I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> I believe I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. Right um, Here's your audition. <laughs> I feel I feel like it's all like in the back of your throat though, isn't it? It's like yes, yeah, it's, it's back. <laughs> Did I get the job or what? You just nailed it. Now we just gotta see you walk. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, can't. I got ears on it. I can't, I can't do it. Fair. <laughs> One video. Well, now that we have that audition, which was brilliant, <laughs> Jacob, when when you were casting for um, The Walking Dead, uh, what did you know going into it? Um, I didn't know much. They were, they, what I knew is, is it was, a uh, without saying too much, uh, what I knew is they, they were looking for a group okay. and they needed a group of people that would, um, have been previously established, had been around for a while that nobody had known about. And, um, well, at least the people that I'm, you know, involved with. And um, and so that was all I really knew. They were just not releasing any information. So it was like, hey, you're just auditioning for this particular, you know, scene and that's it. And um, I guess it was probably three weeks later that I was contacted and like, hey, they want to check your availability. And so we're, you know, now we're here. And we're just just in between chilling and taking, you know, uh, kill sessions with stunt coordinators and and just kicking some ass. It's so much fun. Damn. Oh, I'm so excited. I think we all are. We're, we're on Matt level of excitement right now, which is the <laughs> highest level. On that note, it's, I have to ask, have yeah. you worked on fight choreo before? Have you done any other fight work? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, I've, I've, yes, I have, you know, there's, you know, you know, I've done a lot of stuff over the years, many, many years, of course, in daytime television, which I've been around in, and there's always fights. There's always somebody punching somebody. There's always somebody wrestling with somebody or trying to hit a board against somebody's face, which I've actually done unintentionally. <laughs> and yeah, no, and, and we worked that scene out pretty well. <laughs> and that happened. It happened on a live taking. I felt so bad, but, but he was tough. <laughs> uh, it's, that was one of the questions they asked her like look uh it's a plus talk to you know in your audition you do your audition they want to know uh you want to know that you're good enough right when you so for all your work's sake and then they ask you to do stuff like hey talk about your experiences with con stunt so what would i say that stunt <laughs> coordinating um uh yeah, have flip. you done any <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's the stella that i just <laughs> <laughs> Danica's got the scotch. That was, that was totally <laughs> unintentional. I don't even use that word. I, you do now. I'm like doing my English accent, mate. Um, 
<laughs> so they want to know if you've got tumbling experience, what your, your experience is, like hand-to-hand -hand combat, that sort of stuff. And I was a, a Greco-Roman freestyle and collegiate wrestler. I've wrestled my oh, entire okay. My yeah. entire my life, you know, until I was, uh, you know, just getting ready to go into college and was going to go in that direction. Um, and so I have all that experience at hand to hand sort of stuff, tumbling, especially. And so, yeah, so that wow. I think that played a little bit of a role, especially for the fight scenes with the kill, the kill scenes with, you know, any kind of zombies that it might be approaching. OK, you're prepared. Very fun. Very fun. <laughs> zombies like Alice in Chains. Look, yeah, like you know, Alice <laughs> yeah. is going to be definitely stabbed in the head. <laughs> right here. Oh, I'm recording. Oh, that, that's a fun one. Hey, man, that's I'm in. I'm so down. down. I'm so down. <laughs> no, I'm, I was working with this stunt coordinator. His name is Felipe. And he's, and he's, got, you know, he's got this accent. He talks like this. He's like this stunt coordinator, the main guy. He's like, we, we spend time together. And he's like, he's like, you don't stab the body. You don't stab the body because they still live. They still live. You have to go straight for the head. Yeah, you could decapitate them. And that's one thing. But you could you have to stab them. One way, this way, this way, this way. I was like, oh, right, I got it. <laughs> that's like that's the best life, job in the life world. Lessons, right? Love that. <laughs> Damn. Oh my. Well, speaking of um rewarding death, um <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, since you're such a huge, huge fan of the show, um, yeah. do you have any some of your favorite characters you could tell us about? And uh, what are your do you have any favorite deaths, favorite most rewarding deaths you've seen on the show? You know, I, I would say honestly, so I went back and okay, and like I, I I'm I'm such a nerd about the show. Like I am so such a fan. I watch both of the spin-offs. Um, I'm really into them. And I actually went back and I watched all of The Walking Dead again. I've seen the whole season twice. And I caught a lot of things and I went back and watched it. And I have to say that the episode, the episode, the one that we talked about, Mike, where he and Glenn are both killed by Negan, like it was, especially knowing what I was in store for the second time when I watched it. It was, it was, it made me kind of sick to my stomach. I mean, that, that was such a brutal brutal episode the way that they were both killed and the way that jeffrey dean morgan like his delivery was so spot on with negan it was so like he he was when i found out he was being cast to play negan i was like that's the best casting right there i've ever heard like that there's nobody that could play that character better than him right and he totally delivered but i was always and i love michael he's such a nice guy i loved abraham but glenn was always my favorite like Glenn was always like, he was just so pure and he was just so like, he was always like the voice of reason and he was sort of the uh, like emotional anchor for everybody. And man, like when he was the way he died and when, and, and him saying, I'll find you. Oof. Uh, I mean, that was, yeah. that was yeah. powerful. It really yeah. was. There's definitely not a shortage of like insane deaths on The Walking Dead. Though, so oh I'm, man! Yeah. yeah, yeah. They they wow. But um, all right. Well, we're excited, Jacob, to see what what's in store for you. We don't want to uh, you know, make you spoil too much. So we're gonna pivot just a little bit to Broadway, and yeah. uh, we know that you played Lumiere. Uh, in Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. So did you always have your heart set on the Great White Way? That's a very good question. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, I you know I grew up in musical theater, and when I moved to New York, uh, yeah, I was it was unintentional because I was I had currently this was shit it was two thousand and one, and somewhere around there, and and I had just I had exited General Hospital, and. I was I had just shot the girl next door for uh, Fox Searchlight with a uh, great pr great producer Chuck Gordon October Sky filled the dreams and it was like a, a cool cult classic film I was so great grateful to be part of that and you know I had my sights set on like many actors like I'm gonna just keep this this whole train is gonna keep happening and then it just was sort of drying up and maybe I was also getting complacent I don't know. But um, but I was approached by a producer to to move out to New York to do all my all my children, and I said, well, I'll do it on one condition. 
that condition being that I'm able to do and perform on Broadway no matter what, if I do get out there and if I can make that happen. And she said, yes, yes, and yes, fine. So the I, I spent you know several wow. years out there and I spent several years auditioning. Um, and I auditioned several times for Beauty and the Beast for Lumiere. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's a very hard row, you know, to, to get through because there's so many talented actors that are existing in New York. I mean, it is, they're thriving artists and just barely surviving artists. You know, they're not making much money on Broadway. I mean, just, you know, just a lot of people go, wow, we go to these Broadway shows, we pay all this money to go. And, you know, most of the cast members, you know, unless you have a big name, you're just not, you're not making a lot of dough. You're just good thing. You know, New York is cheap, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> because yeah, because New York is inexpensive. Wow. Um, and so I, you know, I just continuously, whenever the opportunity came up, I, I auditioned and by my, my third, you know, go round, I finally convinced, um, yeah, the main conductor who also was part of, you know, all the putting the music together and they went to Tom Schumacher, who is the head of Disney on Broadway. He of did, course. he did, you know, Lion King, the animation, then brought Lion King to Broadway. And then of course, Beauty and the Beast and all the other stuff. And uh, he went to the managing producer who, who really believed in me. And he goes, it's on your head, mon ami, you know, with the, the you know, with the meaning of the French, my love. And um, they gave me a chance. They finally gave me a chance after going after it so many times. Um, and what was interesting, because even though I was working for ABC, which is a division of Disney, right? These, these companies, they don't, they don't talk to each other. ABC doesn't talk to Disney on Broadway and Disney animation doesn't talk to Disney on Broadway. And you know, it's, it's, it's pretty rare. It's just, they're completely separate departments. Um, and I have to give my hats off to the managing producer because they did a PR release and, and we did a commercial, they did a commercial spot and the show that had been on Broadway for almost shoot, it was probably, I don't know, nine, nine years at that point, 10 years. And it was starting to decline as Broadway shows do as far as the ratings and as numbers and audience attendance, because a lot of people had seen it at that point. And it took the show from, I mean, it wasn't just me. It was the PR chain. It was, the, it was the, everybody working together. Um, but it ended up, it took the show. I think it was like, they were, they were ranked like 15th. And then suddenly it was at number three or four again. And that was for the, the three months that I was running. And then my run was coming to an end. And they said, can we keep you on another three months? But I was, keep in mind, I was doing seven episodes of All My Children and six mm. Broadway shows, yeah. you know, a week simultaneously. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's wow. wild. <laughs> but uh, one of my favorite musicals, I, I love the song Home. And I, I'm not sure whether it was in like the newer version, but Home is like one mm -hmm. of my favorite yeah. Like, ah, oh, so good. Yeah. So good. It's a great show. For sure. So on that same note, um, are there any other musicals that you'd really love to be in? Any dream roles? You know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I've really, you know, I would obviously if, if I've, I, there has been a couple of things that have, have presented themselves since then. Uh, and I've just I either been working on something and it was just, I, I was not available. Um, I do have to say that I, I did pitch while I was working on Disney on Broadway to uh, Tom Schumacher Newsies. And, and <laughs> okay. I was like, Hey, you know, what do you think? He's like, Oh, it'll never work. <laughs> and then two years later, oh, you know, the, show, man. the show is, is launched and oh, you know, it gets, it, gets, it wins Tony's. So, Damn. you know, it, you know, I, I, I don't, I mean, I guess when I was a kid, I would have loved to work, worked on that one, but, uh, you know, that would not necessarily, you know, be something I would be looking at today. There's, you know, there, there's so with many the great shows. Well, <laughs> you can do I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm about ready to scratch this thing off my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Danica, are you with me on this? I could see Jacob in kinky boots. Oh, I like Oh, you. yeah. No. I, 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 I think you're a kinky boots. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I like that. I like that. 
There. Okay. Well, okay. Here, here's a random scenario. Okay. If you both had to be in a Beauty and the Beast scenario where you were turned into a household object, what would you hope to be? Wow. That might be the weirdest question I've ever been asked in my life. Great. Um, <laughs> That's what we strive for. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> you go first, Matt. Or AKA. I was like the candlestick. Um, Lumiere. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you saying any household item? Uh, sure. Yeah. Because there's lots of household items. I mean, you remember like the Lumiere number that I was lucky to perform was the longest running, you know, number as far as length and time. <laughs> uh, 13 minutes, I think. 14 oh minutes. Oh my God. 14 minute how song. Long is, how long is that mug? The the one in the bar. I know that one's insanely long. My uh, one of my really good friends was on the tour of that show. Yeah, that so. that one is probably probably the second longest. Yeah, it's uh -huh. it's pretty long. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, I don't know. I I guess um, if I had to be a household item, yeah, you know, I always uh, I always joked with every chip that was on. You know, chip. You know, the the cup. Mm -hmm. Um. I'd always say to them after the show, I always go, and you still have to live in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was so chip. funny. He's like, can I live out of the cupboard, mama? <laughs> <laughs> no, you still have to live in the cupboard. <laughs> that's it. Poor Chip. Yeah. Oh. Poor kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. I don't really know. I mean, are you saying like just the – the actual characters or no, I think it could be anything. I mean, if you wanted to be the toilet, you could be that. That's probably not, not I, the I best. Thing gonna, to I was actually going to go there. I was going to say, I want to do a, <laughs> a urinal just so everybody can <laughs> urinal. make a piss out of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on you. No, 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 that wouldn't be, the, that wouldn't be the one. What, 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 Matt, what would you do? I would, would I would be the chandelier. Aww. Oh, Aww. and, 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 and why? Because chandeliers are, are so they're either really awesome or they're absolutely terrible and they can ruin the room. But I would hope that I would just I would brighten up the room and I would hope that I would make the room. Do. That's nice. Well, I'll be the doorknob make because everybody gets a turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. Oh, oh, this is hilarious. All right. Oh, well, well Danica, why don't you do oh. one more question and then we'll do our games. All right. So, of course, um, being that, Jacob, you've been on so many different soaps, we have to ask, um, what is the most far-fetched character arc or storyline that you've been part of? Ooh, I've been a part of a lot of those. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, That's there's the some best. weird ones out there and just, just <laughs> very creative. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would say... Well, that, that was not so far fetched, but my first storyline was my introductory into daytime television. I was I was only seventeen years old, and I had a nanny who was probably like twenty four, twenty five, or you know, an au pair or something you would want to refer to as. And um, I get her pregnant, right? I so, do. and I was supposed to be playing like fifteen at the time. So that was, that was, you know, I was like, Ooh, that's pretty racy. That's pretty, that's interesting. And I'm like from a wealthy family and here's this kid who's got this au pair that's supposed to be looking after him and he gets her pregnant. But I think probably the most odd one I had played was when I was brainwashed. And this is the one that won the, the Emmy. This is how they brought me back on. They brought the character rather back onto general hospital with Luke and Laura. Of course, Luke and Laura was played by Tony Geary and Jeannie Francis icons in the industry as far as soaps are concerned cover of time magazine parents our parents went they were at college and they would they were all rushed home to watch their wedding um and that was uh, that was an interesting story um and so so i was brainwashed by helena cassadine to uh and she she would play chess with me back and forth Sort of like the Queen's Gambit, but a, a mm. you know much 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 rougher version. That was a beautiful uh, show, by the way. Yes, mm -hmm. um, that was strange. But I have a real story. I think is even better. Ooh. Go for it. The real story. So when I had to replace this character, and this happens a lot in 
and daytime television, and fans have become accustomed accustomed to it over the years. Um, a character will, you know, actor will leave for whatever reason, or they don't want to work with that ca- that actor anymore, and they end up getting fired, or they move on to something that's bigger. Fantastic. So if it's an important enough character, they have to replace it. So this character was playing Luke and Laura's son, Lucky Spencer. And, and so it was a very coveted role. And going into it, I had heard that neither Tony Geary or Jeannie Francis wanted to work with any replacements. And they even made it vocal. Mm. They said, we will not work with anybody replacing the character. And of course, you know, they're still moving forward with it. But Tony says, okay, look, if I can have a say in it, I'll be okay. And Tony was, you know, he was, you know, had more, uh, I guess, a little more pull at that time. And so, so the, the casting moves forward and I show up in the audition process and I see all these same guys that I've been auditioning against for like the last 10 years. And, and we're all basically screen testing and we're there. And so I go up and I do my screen test and the first one to go. And then all these other guys go later. And I, I never saw their screen test, but apparently they were able to watch mine on a monitor. Um, so I don't know if they, they took anything yeah. from me or not, but, but the story, <laughs> goes, I, get, I get the, I end up getting cast and I end up, I go on my, my first day and, or I, it's my second day rather. I've already worked with Tony once, but then they want to, they want, genie to come in and work with me and i have all these monologues i've got like three pages of monologues just three pages straight and i'm already nervous enough because i'm getting to know everybody and i'm I'm in a brand new place and i probably get about two and a half you know pages in and i i just sort of flub on a line i don't forget my line but i miss the line and she goes (laughs) jesus (laughs) excuse me and Tony looks at her and goes, Jeannie, grow the fuck up. <laughs> she looks at him and goes, fuck you, Tony. <laughs> and I'm going. <laughs> Welcome to the show. And she marches off stage and she goes, I can't work with him. She marches off stage and, uh, he, he looks at me and then he grabs me by the collars and he goes, Hey, sometimes mom and dad fight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, How did you react mom? to that? What did you say to that? <laughs> well, I was already halfway in tears. I was, I, I was all but like 19 I years old. Too. I was so like so embarrassed, <laughs> he was, like making fun of me, right? And, and and then he grabbed me, and then he goes. After that, he goes, "You, I need to talk to you in my dressing room after this." This, and she finally came out, and we did the scenes. He goes, "Look, you know, she's had her heart set on you know, you know, this guy that left the show, and all you gotta do the next time you act with her is cry." I was like, "What?" He's like, "Just drop a tear." Just oh, one. <laughs> well, and I was like, he goes, then you'll have her forever. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. And so I, I drop, I drop a tear or two, and next thing <laughs> you know, and everything's she, good. No, she gave me a big hug at the end of the season. Like, oh, God, that baby, baby, that was so amazing. Was oh <laughs> my God! And the next thing you know, we were friends. We've been, we've been friends ever since. I've told, I've told the story a couple of times. Oh my but, God! But, but it was, it was really sort of a. That moment, I've never seen anything like that on set. You'd only heard about scenarios yeah. of actors and actress, actors and actresses, and who oh, call them both actors today, fighting, you know, on set and yelling at each other. And the crew just stands are going like, <laughs> 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 right? Oh man. We're going to take 10, okay? 10. Yeah. You know, there's no five at this point. We've moved on to 10 minutes. <laughs> Wow. wow. That is amazing. I'm sorry you went through it, but it seems like it was fine in the end, and that's all that matters. So you know, I, won the, I won the Emmy that year. Yeah, so I won the Emmy. Sure did. There you go. Yeah, yes, that's right. awesome. Wow. Ah, okay. That is incredible. Oh. Well, 
We're going to move I, on. I, to... I have to say, too, by the way, that my sister, I have to just give her a shout out. My sister, Kim, is a huge fan. She was oh. so excited that you're doing the show. She's a big uh, Rick Forrester fan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Who's not? There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. She Thank could care less that I'm on here, but she likes yeah. that you're on here. So, Kim, she should <laughs> join us right now. Yeah. Shout out to Kim. Um, all yeah. right. Well, Matt, um, before we get into the games, we actually have something that Jude prepared for you because oh, I don't know if, if you know this. This is your 10th time. On our show. Oh my God, no <laughs> way. Is it really? So, Matt, we have this video for you. Let's see. We have if a we really can get awesome stream. And how about without any further ado, let's bring out our first guest. He is the bassist from Blue October, the one and only Matt Novetsky. The one and only. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever heard that before. My name. <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm chill. So maybe people will think this since I'm quiet and I don't talk a lot or something that I'm I'm not friendly, but that's not the well, case. Apparently, apparently Matt Vincent said you bought him some chicken strips once, so you're a really cool guy. <laughs> You can't put me in this position, man. You gotta do it. Look, I, 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 Justin is my leader. He is my leader. I'm gonna go with Flea. I'm sorry. I love Justin, but I gotta go with Flea. Talking to Gene Simmons in full costume. That's like I just gotta say, for like cheesy or not, that's a moment that I think will just stick with me forever. I would probably ditto everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> The chair, the chair, though, dude. I see the chair. <laughs> like the SNL, like the SNL jacket, yeah. like the Five Timers Club. Yeah. Hell yeah, I'm in. I'll be the, I'll be the Steve Martin of uh, of your show. I love it. I, have a, I really have a really big. Head. He's got a huge noggin. Oh, good, a huge head. It's, it's a virtual planetoid. Oh, you should see the size of this villa. <laughs> Officially part of the Fifth Timers Club. Yeah! Get a jacket! <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that one. That is so creepy. Her and director of Terrifier and the upcoming Terrifier 2. It's no! No! No way! What? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. What is this happening? I love to do My Girl at the Party all the time, part two. She's still partying. And I'll play bassist. Hey, Hank, My Girl likes to potty all the time. Potty all the time. <laughs> oh, man. We. <laughs> Impressionist, we're adding that to your resume as well. Hey, next time if you need audio, just call me. And <laughs> okay, done and done. Making his 27th millionth appearance on the show, ladies and gentlemen, is Matt Novetsky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, get, I, I get a like a gold, like a double gold jacket, like a platinum diamond jacket. And we're thinking, fucking Matt looks so fucking cool right now. Look at that one though. <laughs> and, we're, and we're thinking, I was like, I'm such a fan of him. Look at him right now. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Nine appearance. Man. Thank you, Matt. Ten. I mean, nine, ten. Like, I just like hanging out with you guys. What can I say? You know, Yay. it's I always just, fun. I've got, I've got my my cheesy ass uh, road uh, road my pro roadcaster here in front of me. So I just got to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that wow. was really nice. That was lovely. Oh, yeah, lovely. man. Thank you for like sharing your time with us. I mean, like it means so much to us. And now you're, you know, introducing us to your friends and, and yeah. you know, we're just, thank you. Thank I you. love what you guys are doing. I, I think that, I, you know, one thing I think that um, is really important, especially in the last year is I think a lot of people's eyes have opened to, you know, obviously uh, conventions are great, right? And seeing people in person is great and comic cons are awesome and all that. But like being able to just do the home, 
and for anywhere in the world and being able to connect to people like this, I think is such a cool thing. And I, I just, I love that you guys are doing it and anything I can do to help, you know, I can just keep help spreading the word with it. I will. Cause I love it. I do. Thank you. It's oh great. my God. Thank yeah. you. Well, so Jacob, since you have a sound machine, I have a sound machine too, with only one effect. And actually this is gonna go into our first game. And I hope you guys are cool with this and I hope it goes well, cause we have never done this before. Okay. So seeing as you are the soap opera star, I figured myself, Danica and Matt now want to join you with trying to say the most dramatic lines possible. Mm. So we had my husband, Danica's husband and our friend Casey Joes from Impractical Jokers come up with one liners. Danica and I have not seen these. Obviously, you have not seen these. So what no. we're going to do is bring one of the one-liners up on the screen, and we're going to take turns each saying a different line, and then I will play the dun-dun-dun. Okay, let me do it one more time, a little bit louder. After each line. And we have to try to say them as dramatic as possible. So... Danica, Danica, do you want to go first? Oh, me. Oh, my. All right. Let's see. <laughs> okay. So Danica has not seen this. What is Danica's line? Okay. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but I just asked the staff and it turns out you're not a member here. Oh, uh, oh it didn't work. <laughs> Perfect. That was, it, it was very dramatic though. That was beautiful. All right. I'll try to get the next one. Matt, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, amigo, but I invented karate. <laughs> I like that you stayed like you didn't break. That was really good. All right, Jacob, you ready? He's never done this before. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get ready. Okay. <clears throat> nice try, Jesus. But now it's time for Santa. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Who came up with these? These are so weird. That's, all right. It has Colin written all over it. Uh, <laughs> all right. I think so. Okay. Here we go. All right. It's all you. I have to do this and the sound effect. <laughs> okay. All right, Hates. I, I got this weird. Oh, shit. Sorry. Go no, ahead. it's okay. <laughs> Bill can't be the father. He's famously potent. <laughs> <laughs> all right, really should we all do? <laughs> Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's okay, go round right. two. I'm ready. Round two. Yeah, I Danica. love it. All right. <laughs> My father owns this school. <laughs> That was good. That was good. I felt that one. I'm like, okay, good for your daddy. All right. All right, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Can you help me? I'm looking for the bathroom. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. All right. All right. It's in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jacob, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Giardi. I'm a robot. I never would have guessed. <laughs> All right, I'll do one more. Okay, here we oh, go, man. Okay. okay. Oh, got it. Okay. How could you do this to me? You know, I only drink cold brew. <laughs> Okay. I think that's oh, it. That's oh, I think man. that's all we got. You you got the distress down, man. You've got like the distressed <laughs> character. Like yeah, very you got that. You got that shit. Because I'm not I mean, acting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Well, it's I will try this easy. To again. Yeah, oh, I loved it. Ha, huh, well, game one down. You guys ready for game two? Bring it. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is based on Jake's Jacob's appearance. In Beauty and the Beast, this is a game called Be Our Guest. So we're going to give you two guests, and you guys just pick who you would like to be your guest. I guess, what do you think, Danica, for a night, a week, a, a week. month? 
a week. For an entire week. Yeah. You have to choose between two people that would stay in your home with you for an entire week. This is your home, your own personal home. home. So here we go. The first be our guest, Danica. Ah, uh, would you like to have Connor McGregor or oh, Jake man. Paul oh my in your God. house for a week? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, if you can go first. <laughs> oh, no. I'm definitely going to go with Connor. Connor McGregor. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> All right. Fuck all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Connor, uh, Connor, let's do it. My husband's um, been mistaken for him. <laughs> has he really? <laughs> he must be yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And That's walk great. in a very uh, mysterious way. All right. I think I'd have to go with that, too. I like that. Yeah. I feel like that's like the right Connor. answer. He's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I mean, oh, yeah. That's great. Jake. Surprisingly, is more controversial than Connor in what realm, that's, but that's the thing. I mean, the, uh, honestly, the reason I'm saying it is just based on picture. Like, oh, you're basing it on Just the look photo? at okay. it. Jake is fucking scaring me right now. Like, he, <laughs> looks like he's gonna, he wants to eat your lunch or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't no, like it. I just... Connor looks a little happy, a little crazy, a little happy, but Jake is just freaking me out. It's all crazy. <laughs> all right. Well, here is our next one. So who would you like to be your guest? Steve Buscemi or Quentin Tarantino? Ooh. You know, you know, I mean, I got to say for me, I mean, I, I've sat, I've hung out with Quentin um, on two occasions, and I'm not sure if I was completely enjoying both the occasions i love that. <laughs> Tea. he's a very interesting guy yeah um and uh and a very proud man very 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 proud and he's yeah. like yeah this is the story and this is how it goes okay um so i'm gonna have to go with steve steve the shimmy mm -hmm. okay that's really that's funny because okay so i actually sat at the bar here in austin with quentin tarantino uh and alski what? And I had a very similar experience. And um, he, he, I mean, he, yeah, it was weird. It was just weird, honestly. It was a very weird exchange. And Alan was not himself that night, which didn't help. But so I, I spent most of the time apologizing for him. But honestly, I'm a huge Steve Buscemi fan. I love, he's always like the oddball, crazy uncle character in every movie. I fucking love him. I'm a huge okay. fan. I'd love to hang out with I, he can stay all year as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you say that now. But yeah. All right. All right. I'm into it. All right. Our next one. Would you rather have Flea or Justin? Oh, Flea? you, you oh. guys. <laughs> Man, what this Blame is her. this is. <laughs> Am I allowed to choose both of them? Yeah. Oh, because sure. that would be a party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt? You know, honestly, uh, I got to say that I get better advice. I get better life advice from Justin than he always, whenever I need advice and it's like one of those things where you ask 10 people, he's always the one that gives me the right answer. He's always the one that says something and I'm like, yep, damn it. He's right. Like, you know what I mean? You got that friend in your life, right? That's always like, no, 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 no. Fuck what everybody else just said. Listen, this, listen, this is reality. And then you walk away going, yep, yep, yep. That's right. Justin has always been in my corner in that way. He's always been that guy for me. So I feel like not only that, our daughters are besties. So I feel like that's a bonus, right? I'd love to hang out with Flea. Don't get me wrong. I'm a huge fan. But um, I don't know, man. I might be like doing yoga and like lots of weird stuff by the time I'm yeah, done hanging out with Flea. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Namaste. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my guy, man. I'm gonna stick with my bandmate. Yay! Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <I'm> so <laughs> Here's the next one. Uh okay. Negan ooh, or the ooh, governor. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Well, they always say keep your enemies close, so I'm gonna go yeah. with that. <laughs> I yeah, I'm gonna go with that too. I actually love the governor. I think he's a I like he's so he was a really complex villain, which I loved. I loved his, like the way he came back. I love that whole story. And, um, but Negan is just so fucking funny. He's just <laughs> so funny. The shit that comes out of his mouth, like even in the comics, you know, he's, he's just so hilarious. Like I'd have to go with him. I would. Fair. Okay. 
I do like the eye patch, though. I have to give it up for the eye patch. All right, Danica, you ready to take it home? Tricky dicky this is... eye patch. <laughs> this is the last one. All right. Would you rather have in your home Erica Kane or Stefano Demera? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know, this goes without saying. I mean, I spent many, many years with the lady. Um, and I have to say she is, you know, here's something very important um, about the industry, this industry the daytime industry is, you know, because you're on set Monday through Friday, you get to know these people. And I have worked with some serious tools um, that are just not gracious people, but the, the leadership starts from the top down. Um, and, you know, it, these, these people, which, which, you know, Susan has been uh, on, episode one from the very beginning of all my children she spent all those years and a lot of people start to become jaded or whatever she never did not for a second and and she only showed love and support of the show and everybody under her and she's just she's a, a fabulous woman and she has never lost that amazing ability just to be a person, normal person, and and I love that about her. She's uh, so I have to go, of course, with with Miss Erica Kane. Awesome, <laughs> Matt. My actually, my other sister uh, was a big fan of the show, so um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with her too. I always thought she was beautiful. She is. Beautiful. She's gorgeous. Go yeah. Beautiful woman. Plus, yeah. I feel like I'm being judged uh, again. I'm going back to the pictures. I'm, so I'm living right in the now. moment too much. <laughs> but, look, I'm look, drop like <laughs> but look at the way he's looking at you right now. He's just—he's very. What are you up to? This <laughs> young man. He's not good enough for my daughter. Is that you how know? you toast your toast? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. He's judging me. Um, Jacob, somebody wants to know how many times has Stefano been lost at sea. And they said it's a serious question. I, <laughs> so. It sounds like a serious question, but if I was on Days of Our Lives, I would know that question. I, I don't. I honestly don't know. <laughs> okay, we'll have to do our research, and hopefully, uh, we can. To, I, I'm going to guess twice. <laughs> okay, twice. There we go. Perfect. Well, you guys survived our games, and thank you guys so much. This has been such a joy. Uh, before we wrap it up, Jacob, we want to talk about your podcast. So what can you tell us about uh, Real Conversations with Jacob? Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, well, Real Conversations, I just, it's up here right now. You can listen to it every Wednesday. Um, a new podcast coming out tomorrow. Um, and it, and it, we deal with mental health, the stuff that we don't want to talk about. Um, a lot of people, you know, I'm so glad that more people are talking about it, of course. I wasn't surprised. I was I was pleasantly surprised rather how many of my friends in the business have opened up about struggles and the hurdles that they've had to overcome in their life. And so that's what we talk about, but I always highlight what's going on in their career. And um, of course, uh, you know, people can find out a lot of inf uh, information about some of their favorite people. And of course, uh, there's also the other side of the podcast, which we deal directly with, um, uh, you know, she's my sidekick and she comes in and we talk about it. Chris Hallstrom, we basically, you know, take a piece of everybody's conversation that we've had and we say, you know, how can we relate this to real life and the help that we can provide and your life, your voice is available. Um, of course, I work directly with Boys Town, which has been around over a hundred years. And for those of you who don't know who Boys Town is, it was a very famous movie with Spencer Tracy and Mickey Rooney and dates Probably most of the audiences are listing the podcast, but Mickey Rooney won his first Oscar for that movie. Um, it's about Father Flanagan, which is a true story, who took all these kids in, boys and girls, uh, mostly boys because they were sent off during the Great Depression because mom and dad said, hey, can't afford you. Go find work. Seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds. Um, and so they would, just, they would just get sent out, and uh, Father Flanagan took them in, and he would give them a home, find them a family. And he always said, there's no such thing as a bad boy. Um, and uh, he, he, he really, you know, worked with these kids. And, and um, they still do this today. For over 100 years, Boys Town has been saving children and healing families. And that's, um, and that's why I created this podcast um, is because I was in foster care at, some, at one point in my life and uh, or been diverted from my own personal family. And I wanted to allow people to understand that, look, 
you can you can still come from something that doesn't make sense that's not normal maybe or particularly available to everybody and you can still become someone and so that's the focus of the podcast well wow. thank wow. you so thank much you for, so sharing. Much for sharing Ooh, I'm thank you. Myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is anyone else yeah, hearing the echo? echo yes yes yeah i'm getting yeah. some echo <laughs> Let me see if I can see myself. myself. You know, that's me. Yeah, it might be you, actually. actually. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Okay, Danica, you're going to have to do the wrap it up. No, no, now I'm not hearing it. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. But yeah, thank thank you for sharing that, Jacob. Um, And yeah, you can find it, um, I'm assuming, wherever uh, you can stream podcasts. Yeah, it's anywhere and everywhere you can find a podcast or where you listen to your podcast. It's available. Real Conversations with Jacob Young. Awesome. Well, before Man, we do I, wrap I, this up, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, look, I, I, what you just said is so awesome, man. And I, uh, that's, you know, obviously I'm a big fan of your voice. And I was, I was really, I, I loved hearing your music. And that's what really got me when Rich introduced me to you. And I was really excited to work with you. But, mental health is such a big deal to my band. It's so important to us. And it's something we talk about all the time. And our documentary is very mental health centric. Um, but that right there is why rich connected, connected us It's because of the person that you are. So I, I commend you for that. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Jacob. Yeah, absolutely. So when are you coming on my podcast? Uh, anytime. <laughs> I'll be there anytime, man. Uh, we're gonna, Love to. You're going to be the next guest, brother. I'm in. Let's all do right. it. Yay. <laughs> um, so uh, before we do wrap this up, we're going to go over our upcoming guests that we have coming up for the rest of May, which is almost oh, over, which is weird. insane. I know. So on Thursday, we have WWE Hall of Famer, The Godfather. Next Tuesday, we're welcoming back Matty Riley, who, Matt, you also introduced us to him, and uh, Lonnie from Black Veil Brides. And then uh, Thursday, next Thursday, we're welcoming back Robert Duncan, who was the editor-in-chief from Cream Magazine. Really cool, legendary guy. So um, before we do wrap this up, do you guys have any final thoughts? I just want to say thank you guys for having us, man. Nine, ten times. I'll do it another ten. Just just Yay. anytime I can. Please keep having me. Thank you. Thank I was just going to say, like, when are you bringing on from number 11? Got, yeah. A- a- after your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you so much, kid, Danica. Um, this has been a blast. Uh, just yeah. absolutely hilarious and lots of fun. What a great concept you guys have come up with as far as your show structure. And, you know, if you ever need anything from me, I'm here for you too. Thank you. Oh my God. That's such an honor. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And um, even though we don't know necessarily about your role in The Walking Dead, I hope that you get to kill a lot of zombies and um, we'll see you guys real soon. Bye everybody. Awesome. Thanks guys. Bye.